الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومسيئات عملنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمد العبد ورسوله بعد Today, inshallah, we'll explain page 239, chapter 12, Surah Yusuf. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, A'udhu Allah min ash-shaitan ar-rajim. Wa qala niswatun fi al-madinati mara'atun azizi turawidu fataha an nafsih. Qad shagafaha hubba inna lanaraha fi dhalalim mubiyan. فلما سمعت بمكرهن أرسلت إليهن وأعتدت لهن متكأ وآتت كل واحدة منهن سكينا وقالت اخرج عليهن فلما رأينه أكبرنه وقطعن أيديهن وقلن حاش لله ما هذا بشرا إن هذا إلا ملك كريم قالت فذلكن الذي نمتنني فيه ولقد راودته عن نفسه فاستعصم ولئن لم يفعل ما آمره لا يسجنن ولا يكونن من الصاغرين قال رب السجن أحب إلي مما يدعونني إليه وإلا تصرف عني كيدهن أصب إليهن وأكون من الجاهلين فاستجاب له ربه فصرف عنه كيدهن إنه هو السميع العليم So we continue the story of Yusuf عليه السلام uh, when uh, the wife of the Minister of Finance of Egypt in whose house was Yusuf alayhi salam, who was actually a slave. He was bought by the minister. The wife of the minister should try to seduce uh, Yusuf alayhi salam, and he ran away from her. And they met her master, that's her husband, uh, at the door. So she tried to hide the fact that she was the one who was seducing Yusuf. And uh, she asked her husband, what are you going to do to a man who tries to to uh, have illicit sexual relationship with your wife, except that you should throw him in jail or uh, give him a severe punishment. And uh, Yusuf alayhi salam defended himself because some people think that just because they're on the truth, they won't defend themselves. They'll just be quiet. They'll say, Allah will make me innocent. No, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told you to defend yourself as Yusuf alayhi salam did. He said, she is the one that tried to seduce me, not me. So he didn't say, oh, I'm a prophet, you know, let me just not say anything Allah is going to, uh, uh, is going to go and help me and uh, ex exonerate me. No, we have to undertake the necessary steps because this is part of relying on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Part of relying on, on Allah is to undertake the necessary steps with your uh, senses, with your hands, with your mouth, etc. But your heart is with Allah, knowing that regardless of how many uh, things you do to try to achieve the result, only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can allow you to achieve the result if he wants, or he can stop you regardless of whatever means you have undertaken. So we have to undertake the step, the steps that are necessary. So Yusuf alayhi salam defended himself. He said, no, she's the one that tried to seduce me. And then there was someone from her family that said, let's look at the evidence. His shirt is, is broken. If the shirt was broken from the front, that means that she she's telling the truth that he tried to attack her and she pushed him off of her by ripping his shirt otherwise if the shirt is uh, broken from the back that means that he was running away from her and she tried to catch him and her and his shirt ripped and after he, they saw that the shirt the shirt ripped from, from the back they knew that Yusuf was telling the truth and then of course women in the city the women of the uh, of the higher echelon in in the in the town they heard about what happened to their uh, crony the wife of the aziz and uh, they said that the wife of the minister is seeking to 
seduce her slave young man. In other words, what a shameful thing that she's doing. Indeed, she loves him violently. Verily, we see her, we see her in plain error. And then the question rises now in Islam, uh, a woman is allowed to have a slave, uh, a male slave, and a man is allowed to have a female slave. Yes, correct. However, the master who has a female slave, he is allowed to sleep with her because he has more right on her than being his wife. Because a wife, uh, she comes with uh, free will and she has a contract and she has some rights, such as uh, seeking the divorce, etc. But a slave girl is wholly owned by her master, including her her body. So a master is allowed to sleep with a slave girl. And this is uh, this was normal in, in throughout history, even in the Western world, etc. Until slavery was abolished. But the 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 woman. And, and also when this, the master is sleeping with his slave girl, she's not allowed to fornicate or sleep with any other person so that when she gets pregnant, it's it belongs to the master. It's it's his son. So just because she's a slave girl doesn't mean that the master is going to sleep with her. She's going to sleep with someone else. And of course, if the slave girl is married because the slave girl is allowed to be married with the consent of her master at that point, of course, the master is not going to sleep with her because she has a husband because the, the main thing in Islam is for the uh, for the uh, lineage not to be mixed up. Now someone is going to say, well, today's world we can use condoms, etc., blah, blah. We said one of the main things, not the only thing, because it is haram to commit zina even if it does not lead to the woman being pregnant. And, you know, uh, so back to the, to, the, to the point, yes, a master is allowed to sleep with his slave girl, but of course he's the only one who's allowed to sleep with her. If he does not sleep with her, then and, uh, and and let's say, for example, she wants to get married, the idda of a slave girl, the period of her waiting before another man can sleep with her is two months, two, two menstrual periods, as opposed to the free slave, to the free woman, her uh, idda, the time she has to wait uh, before she gets married to another husband, is three menstrual periods. So different rulings by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala based on the different uh, people in the society. Similarly, the command for the free women to cover all their bodies, including their faces, was only given to the free women. But for the slave women, they were not allowed to cover their faces. So in Islam, at the time of the Prophet and throughout history, uh, the free women used to cover all of their bodies, including their faces. The slave girl was not allowed to cover her face to the point that even Umar if you saw a slave girl covering her face, you would strike her, telling her, you're trying to look like a free woman. So a woman who is free covers all of her body as Allah ordered her in uh, in chapter 24, because this way when people see her all covered, they know that she's a free woman, meaning she's not the one to go and commit zina. But the slave girl is allowed to expose her face. And of course, the Muslim woman today can choose if she wants to uh, live like a free woman and imitate the free woman of, of Islam or imitate the slave girls uh, that used to not cover their faces. But when a woman has a slave who is a man, she's not allowed to sleep with him. She's not allowed to sleep with him unless, unless she gets married to him, unless she gets married to him. So the ruling is different. If a woman has a slave male, this doesn't mean that she can sleep with him unless she gets married to him. So this is different injunction. So here, back to the story of the wife of the Aziz. Uh, Yusuf alayhi salam was the slave of this woman and she tried to sleep with him. And the women of the town uh, saw that she was uh, she was in error, as they said. So when she heard that they were mocking her and speaking foul about her, uh, she sent for them. She prepared a plot to show them that what she did for for Yusuf alayhi salam, any woman uh, would do it because Yus Yusuf alayhi salam was uh, very handsome. So she sent for these women and prepared the banquet for them. She gave each one of them a knife, we'll see the details. And she said to Yusuf alayhi salam, come out before them so that they can see you. Then when these married women saw Yusuf alayhi salam, they exalted him and his beauty. And in their astonishment, they cut their hands. So again, back to the point that the same way men 
they may look, look at a woman and see that she's beautiful and wish to sleep with her. Women, likewise, they can look at men, see that they are handsome and wish to sleep with them, even if they are married. Therefore, save your women from watching men. Uh, because this is something that most folk, most folks don't, don't pay attention to. They say she's a woman. They think that she has no feelings. So she watches TV, she watches movies, she watches this actor, that singer, etc. And they think that no evil will happen from that. No, woman is just like men. She has uh, desires. Therefore, she should only look at her husband the same way that the husband should only look at his wives. And they said, how perfect is Allah? No man is this. He is so handsome, he can't be a man. This is none other than noble angel. So the wife of the minister told them, this is the young man about whom you did blame me. And I did, in fact, seek to seduce him. Therefore, you know, women, you know, they may be shy in front of men, but when they're with each other, they just tell each other all the, uh, the mess and the evil things that they do. They're not ashamed about it because they boast about doing these things when they are together. So a woman may not tell the truth in front of her husband or her brother or something, but when she's with other women, she usually spills the beans. And she said, I did seek to seduce him, but he refused. And now if he refuses to obey me, in other words, she's still seeking to seduce him, even though she was caught and the news was spread, she was not repenting. And she says, now, if we refuse to obey my order, he ordered to commit illicit sexual act with me. He shall certainly be among those that will be cast into prison and will be among those who are disgraced. Now, also the way that she said this sentence shows you the personality of a woman. He will surely be thrown in jail and he will also be humiliated. So in other words, she's not really sure about the fact. So women usually when they make make a decision that they're not really sure about their decision. This is how Allah created them. And we really can't pretend that man is like woman. Allah says the opposite in the Quran. And you know, some people, you know, I, I heard one of the most, uh, how should I describe it? Idiotic, stupid, funny khutbah in my lifetime during the uh, Women's Day where the Imam was trying, he was trying and harder than the kuffar to say that the woman is like men and he's bringing some things from the quran that has nothing to do with this and saying look this is equality so for example he said when allah says inna al muslimina wal muslimat wal mu'minat wal qanit wal qanitat the verse allah says surely muslim male and muslim female uh, believer male believer female the worshiping male worshiping female at the end allah says allah will forgive them and give them a great reward so that means that whether you're a man or a woman Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to give you a reward what is this guy saying he's like no here Allah is saying is like the Muslim men are equal to the Muslim women it's not equal in reward nor they're equal in status this is what he's trying to say you also brought another verse I mean that's why I said I'm like, I, I was holding my head I'm like what am I supposed to do should I leave because this is I never heard this kind of garbage before he said when Allah says uh, the believing men and the believing women they are protectors of one another what does the ayah mean mean that the believing that the believers who are male they are protectors and helpers of each other and the believing women are helpers and protectors of, of, of each other he said no he said this means that the believing women that the believing women are the protectors and helpers of the believing men and and the believing men are helpers of the believing women. So, you know, it's okay. We can mix together. We can, we are the same. So he's like, you know, men and women is like the same. It's like, I'm like, even, I don't think even the kuffar are making these kind of statements because even them, even though they're disbelievers in Allah and his messenger Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, they still have some books in, in, you know, in front of them, the Bible, etc., where actually in the Bible, uh, they're saying that they're not even sure if a woman is a human being or not. Well, in Islam, we know that she's a human being. We know that men and women they are equal in terms of punishment and reward this we sure about because Allah does not do injustice to all of them but in Iraq in the society Allah says to men 
is a higher degree than women. And there are some things that Allah prohibited women from doing in the society, such as being the leader of a country, being a minister, being a judge, being uh, the one that, that makes uh, marriages between women. Even though we see in some Muslim countries, they are trying to do that so they can appease, appease, this is the word, appease the kuffar. But it has nothing to do with Islam. We should, we should believe it and we should understand it because look, people may try and, and, and change the religion however much they want, the religion of Allah will always remain pure and Allah will always select the people who will hold the religion the way it is until Allah's victory comes and then these hypocrites will, will be remorseful for what they did because they changed the religion to a piece of disbelievers as Allah says in Surah Al-Ma'idah When Allah's decree comes to pass that victory will be given to his religion these hypocrites who appeased the disbelievers and changed the religion to a piece of disbelievers will be remorseful for what they did so uh back here to the uh, uh we said that she said he will surely be imprisoned and most likely he'll be humiliated so he didn't she didn't say he will go to prison and be humiliated this is a man's personality right so yusuf salam said oh my lord prison is dearer to me than that to which they invite me unless you turn away their plot from me i will feel inclined towards them and be one of the ignorant now Having said that about women, we have to understand that the women can do more good in the society than men. The same way she can do more harm in the society than men. If she's evil and she follows this, these Western calls of her to follow the way of shaitan, she's going to commit a lot of evil in the society. She's going to lead and mis she's going to lead in evil and mislead people and mislead the generation that she's raising. But when a woman is believing in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and following his rules, she is doing more good to the society than the man because the man at that stage would be you know his position would be uh, to bring the bread home and, and to supervise his family to raise his kids but the actual education the actual preparation of the kids for the future for the society it's the mother who does it when the mothers when the mothers the muslim mothers fell in the trap of shaitan and the foul of shaitan who is the west and he did the call of the so called uh, emancipation of women but it's actually her emancipation from slavery to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and putting her into the slavery of shaitan because no one is free in this world Allah did not create us to be free if you are free if you pretend to be free then choose not to breathe choose not to breathe if you are free you are free to do anything and choose not to breathe. of course you can you know why because you're a slave you're under the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but women when they find followed shaitan the muslim society is broke and we start having a lot of uh, kids born out of wedlock a lot of crime a lot of rape a lot of uh, homicides a lot of injustice a lot of you name it why because the muslim mothers did not do their jobs the muslim mothers did not do their jobs and that's why the muslim society is the way it is today but when they stayed at home and raised a generation filling them with love with mercy to Teaching them Quran, teaching them the love of Muhammad, teaching of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, teaching them the good behavior. The Muslims were leaders of mankind. Today, the world have the world has no leaders and it's going up in flames. But it's okay because out of these flames, the Muslims will come out to be the leaders. Out of these flames, mark my words, the Muslims will come out to be the new leaders of, the, of this world. Next, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, So his Lord answered, his dua, the dua of Yusuf salam, and turned away from him from their plot because Yusuf salam knew that being subjected to the fitna day after day, he may end up falling into temptation because this is who we are human beings. We shouldn't pretend that we are too strong to go and face fitna and think that we are not going to fall into it. That's why even the Prophet salam said, if you hear the Dajjal, the Antichrist, is in one town, don't think that you have a strong faith and go to him him to face him no run away from him run away from you with your religion the news reaches women in the city who also plot against yusuf allah states that the news of what happened between the wife of aziz and yusuf spread in the city that is egypt and people talked about it especially the women as allah said 
and women in the city set, such as the women of the chiefs and princes, the higher ups in the society, while admonishing and criticizing the wife of the Aziz, they were blaming her for trying to sleep with her uh, slave. The wife of the Aziz is seeking to seduce her slave young man. She is luring her servant to have sex with her. Indeed, she loves him violently. Her love for him filled her heart and engulfed it to the point that she could no longer think clearly. This is what they meant. Verily, we see her in plain error by loving him and trying to seduce him. She was out of her mind. She could no longer control herself and her urge. Next, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, so when she heard of their accusation that, that she was speaking about her and saying, indeed, she loves him violently, uh, Muhammad bin Ishaq commented, they heard of Yusuf's beauty and actually wanted to see him. So they just said these words in order to get a look at him. So basically, they start speaking ill about her so that she can invite them and show, them, show Yusuf السلام, to them. So even then, they, they had their plot and she had a plot. Uh, she had a counterplot for them. So this is when she sent for them, invited them to her house, or said, and prepared a banquet for them. Ibn Abbas said, Ibn Jubair, uh, Ibn Abbas, Sa'id bin Jubair, Mujahid al Hassan al Basri al Suddi, and several others commented that she prepared a sitting room for these women folk, which had couches, pillows circling on, and food that requires knives to cut. Because she she had a plot. She wanted to give them knives and have them look at Yusuf and cut their hands without uh, without feeling it because they were kind of like um, numb to the pain, as, as the saying goes. They became numb to the pain when they saw Yusuf, alayhi uh, salam. Food such as citron, I think this is a French word, which means uh, lemon, but I'm not sure what uh, the tafsir here means. In other words, some, some fruit that requires a knife to cut. That's why she gave them the fruit and gave them a knife as an excuse for them to cut uh, this this fruit. This Allah says, And she gave each one of them a knife as part of her plan of revenge for their plot to see Yusuf. So she was very uh, cunning. And she said to Yusuf, السلام, come out before them because she she had asked him to stay away from the women at first until she ate, until they ate. And then after that, she gave them the knife and the fruit to cut. So when they start cutting the fruit, she told him to come out to the women. So when he went out and the women folks saw him, they just exalted him. They, they, they thought highly of him and were astonished at what they saw. He was so handsome. As we will see, the Prophet ﷺ met Yusuf ﷺ in the night of uh, the ascension to heaven. Uh, he met him in the third uh, heaven and said that Yusuf السلام, was given half the beauty. And what's more, who is the grandmother of Yusuf السلام? It is Sarah, the wife of Ibrahim السلام, who was the most beautiful woman after Hawa. Hawa, the wife of Adam السلام, Allah created her with his own hands. She's the most beautiful woman. The one that was beautiful after her is Sarah, the wife of she was the most beautiful woman after Hawa. And that's why when uh, they went to the land of Egypt at the time of Ibrahim, السلام, the Pharaoh heard of her beauty. And basically he wanted to take care of Ibrahim. السلام. And this is why the woman should cover her face. Because the beauty is in the face. You know, when people tell me, you know, covering the face is not mandatory. I tell them, okay, if it's not mandatory, why do you need to go to a woman's house before marrying her to look at her face? Because not that before you get married to look at her face. Well, if the woman doesn't cover her face, why do you go see her? So, of course, the opinion that covering the face is mandatory is the correct opinion that Allah knows best. So here, uh, this, this is another thing. You know, we said Fir'aun, he heard about the beauty of Ibrahim alayhi salam. What did he tell the soldiers? If that's her husband, kill him and bring her to me. So, oh, you husband, if you don't tell your wife to cover her face and she's beautiful, some evil thing will happen to you as a result. Someone may see your wife. He may see she's too beautiful. He just can't control himself. He goes do magic. Smallest, easiest thing. Very rampant in today's evil world. Magic is very easy and very cheap. And then your wife is going to start loving another man. 
and she's going to leave you. And guess what? It's your fault. You didn't tell her to cover her face. Some people may think I'm exaggerating. Well, it goes ask the people to whom this happened. Or some people may just uh, hold you up a gunpoint or a knife point. They saw your woman. She's beautiful. They want her. So you can go and start telling me that the the uh, the affair has like khilaf, you know, some scholars said this. Yeah, we can we can do these theoretical uh, uh, discussion between me and you. But in fact, and in reality, even if it was mandatory for your own protection, tell you what, tell your women to cover her face. Tell your women to cover their faces and to save the society from the fitna. So here we said Yusuf salam was very handsome. What's more, his grandmother was the most beautiful woman after Hawa. And when the women saw him, they start cutting their hands in amazement at his beauty while thinking that they were cutting the, the fruit with their knives. Therefore, they injured their hands. And even the way Allah made the statement, it's not they injured it once. They kept on cutting their hands many times, but they were numb to the pain. Qatta'na. Not qatta'na, qatta'na. That means they cut many times their hands without feeling the pain. Why? They, they became numb to the pain by the sight of Yusuf Ali Salam, who was a handsome young man. So they start cutting their hands in, in amazement at his beauty while thinking that they were cutting the fruit with their knives. Therefore, they injured their hands with the knives that they were holding, according to several reports of Tafsir. Others said that after they ate and felt comfortable, and after having placed the fruit in front of them, given each one of them a knife, the wife of the Aziz asked them, would you like to see Yusuf now? So they said yes. So she sent for him to come in front of them. And when they saw him, they started cutting their hands. She ordered him to keep going back and forth in front of them so that they can see him from all sides, just like uh, the uh, fashion uh, expositions, right? And he went back in a while. They were still cutting their hands. When they felt the pain, finally, they started screaming. And she said to them, you did all this from one look at him. So how can I be blamed that I've been with him all these years in the same house and I have been controlling myself? So don't blame me for feeling weak and trying to seduce him to sleep with me. So they agreed with her and said, They said, how perfect is Allah? No man is this. This is not a man. This is, this is not the face of a man. And this is not other than a noble angel. And it's something else to mention. All men in Jannah will look like Adam alayhi salam. All men in Jannah will look like Adam alayhi salam, whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created with his own, his own hands. Everyone will be very handsome. Same color, same looks. There's going to be no jealousy, no difference between them. If someone is going to say, well, how is a woman going to recognize her husband from someone else? I'll tell you that I will woman recognizes her twins, right? Who gave her that ability? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to give women that ability. Plus, do you think women in Jannah, they're going to be going out by themselves, going to the souk and trying to buy something and co-mingling with men? That's only evil that happens in a world that is full of shayateen. In Jannah, shaitan does not enter Jannah. Therefore, he won't whisper for us of the evil things. And the woman, the believer woman in Jannah is much more beautiful than the Hur al Ain are creatures that Allah subhanahu wa created with his own hands. They're very beautiful, but they they hold the position of slave girls in this world. The Muslim believe in woman, she's much more beautiful than Al Hur al Ain. Because women like to be beautiful. And in Jannah, they will be more beautiful than Al Hur al Ain. They will have no jealousy. Why? Because jealousy is from Shaitan, as we said, that Shayateen that inhabit with us this world. But in Jannah, Allah will recreate us in a perfect manner underline this in a perfect manner no jealousy uh, no sweat except uh, the smell of musk no uh, no urination uh, a man as the prophet said will be able to make love to his wife for 70 years neither he nor her will be tired we will be able to see allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at least on friday is for the people of the lower heavens, the people in the higher levels of heaven, they'll be able to see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala every day. 
everyone will be able. To meet Muhammad in Jannah. So whatever it is that happens in this world is really not worth it. So a person should be able to sacrifice all this passing passing pleasures, temporary pleasures in this world for the sake of achieving eternal bliss. So they said to her, we do not blame you anymore after what we saw. They never saw anyone like Yusuf salam because he, peace and blessed be upon him, was given half of the beauty. As the Prophet salam said, because he passed by Yusuf salam during the night of the Isra. Isra is the journey from uh, Mecca to Jerusalem. And Al-Mi'raj is the ascension from Jerusalem to the seventh heaven. And during his ascension, the Prophet salam saw Yusuf salam in the third heaven. And he commented about him. فَإِذَا هُوَ قَدْ أُعْطِيَ شَطْرَ الْحُسْنِ Yusuf السلام, was given a half of all beauty. Mujahid and others said, they said, we seek refuge, refuge from Allah. مَا هَذَا بَشَرًا No man is this. He's too handsome to be a man. They said next, إِنْ هَذَا إِلَّا مَلَكٌ كَرِيمٌ قَالَتْ فَذَلِكُنَّ الَّذِينُ مْتُنَّنِي فِيهِ This is none other than a noble, a noble angel. So she said, this is he, the young man, about whom you did blame me for trying to seduce him. She said these words to them so that they excuse her and accuse her behavior. <coughs> because a man who looks this beautiful and perfect is worthy of being loved, she thought. She said, And I did seek to seduce him, but he refused. And we also mentioned last week, this should also be a warning for men that leave male servants in their homes with their with their daughters or their wives that are in grave danger just because he's a servant that doesn't stop the fact that he has urges as a man and your women have urges as a woman so she said i did see seek to seduce him but he refused to obey me some scholars said that when the women saw yusuf's beauty she told them the wife of the aziz told the women about his inner beauty that they did not know of he was a pious man he was chaste he was beautiful from the inside and the outside he obeyed allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then she then threatened him that she's like look i tried uh with the method of carrots to seduce you you didn't you didn't uh, answer me so now i'm going to use the method of sticks with you either you sleep with me illegally or you will be uh, cast in jail and humiliated as we said don't read this because it changes the meaning the first one names the second one is noon at Tawqeed Al Khafifa. And now, if you refuse to, to obey my order, he shall certainly be cast into prison and will be one of those who are disgraced. This is when Prophet Yusuf sought refuge with Allah from their evil and wicked plot. He did not want to fall into the evil plot with them and said, Oh my Lord, prison is dearer to me than that to which they invite me to disobey you Allah and commit fornication with them sexual acts evil he did not want to fall into this evil unless you turn away their plots from from me I will feel inclined towards them and will be one of the ignorant because I will a person that falls into this Obedience, especially Zina, is one of the ignorant people. Yusuf, make dua to Allah. If you abandon me and I am reliant on myself, then I have no power over myself, nor can I bring harm or benefit to myself, except with your power and will. <clears throat> Verily, you are sought for each and everything, 
and our total reliance is on you alone, O oh Allah, for each and everything. Please do not abandon me and leave me to rely on myself. Otherwise, I will feel inclined towards them and be one of the ignorant people by falling into illegal sexual act. So his Lord answered his invocation. Yusuf alayhi salam was immune from error by Allah's will. Allah spoke about Yusuf alayhi salam saying, إِنَّهُ مِنْ عِبَادِنَا الْمُخْلَاصِينَ He is among our chosen servants. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose him and purified him from evil. The same way he chose all prophets and our prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa among them and protected him from all evil even before Islam. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made Yusuf alayhi salam salam immune from error and saved him from accepting the advances of the wife of the Aziz. He preferred prison. Yusuf alayhi salam preferred to go to prison rather than accept her illicit call. This indicates the best and most perfect grade in this case because Yusuf alayhi salam was youthful, beautiful and full of manhood. His master's wife was calling him to herself and she was the wife of the Aziz of Egypt. She was also very beautiful and wealthy as well as having a great social rank. He refused all this and preferred to go to prison because he feared Allah and hoped to earn his reward. Now, someone may say, well, look, we are human beings and we are weak. When something like this happens, what are we supposed to do? Well, very simple. What if the Aziz is supposed to ask for divorce? Or you know, not what if the Aziz, but like in Islam, let's talk about Islamic injunction. If a woman somehow falls in love with a man, which is a mistake, how does she know this man who is Ajnabi, who is foreigner from her? How did she come to love him? She probably had discussions with him in social media, WhatsApp, Instagram, or something, you know, it all starts as being, well, this is an innocent thing. He's like my brother, we're only stay making general statements. And then, of course, slowly uh, the evil trickles into your heart and his heart because this is the job of shaitan. And then all of a sudden you start loving him. If you love a foreign man who is not your husband, this in itself is an evil lead. However, don't, don't pursue the evil lead and fall into a, a graver evil deed which is committing zina with this person when you are when you are married no don't do that slave of allah ask for divorce after your idda and if you ask for divorce and your idda is only one menstrual period at that point you get married to him and do whatever you want with him in a halal way do not fall into zina especially if you're a wife allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made you a woman made made god Guarding your chastity from evil sexual acts as one of four pillars for you to enter Jannah. So for women to enter Jannah, they don't have to go to a mosque five times a day. They don't have to go to jihad. They don't have to go to work. They don't have to support the family. They don't have to fight. They don't have to do a lot of things. The Prophet ﷺ gave the woman four primordial, crucial pillars, conditions for her to enter Jannah. قال عليه الصلاة والسلام إذا صلت المرأة خمسها وصامت شهرها وحفظت فرجها وأطاعت زوجها قيل لها ادخلي الجنة من أي أبوابها شئت <coughs> أو كما قال صلى الله عليه وسلم. The Prophet said, if the woman prays her five mandatory prayers and fasts her month of Ramadan, so these two conditions are related between are related to Allah subhanahu wa taala, and then the next two pillars. They're related to her husband. So two things she does for Allah, which is prayer and fasting, and the two other things she does for her husband, and then she enters Jannah from whichever one of the eight doors that she wants. The other two things is, number one, she has to save her private part from illegal sexual course. And number four is to obey her husband. When he orders her to do something, if it's not haram, she should not argue with him. She should not tell him, I think you're wrong. She should not tell him, well, uh, you always want to control me. All this stuff is nonsense. Let's leave this behind. O oh, slave of Allah, do you love Allah? Do you love his messenger? Obey your husband and do it for the sake of Allah. A person told me something, you know, it's something that we know, but we, really, we don't really think about it. <clears throat> he said, why do you think when a person goes to jihad, he leaves his family behind him? He's facing death and the destruction of his wealth, and he still does it. It's because he's the for the sake of Allah. 
He's expecting the reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Well, similarly, in our behavior and dealing with people, let's undertake the same mindset. Let's do it for the sake of Allah. Oh, woman, if you don't like your husband, if you don't feel that you should obey him, if you don't feel that he deserves to be obeyed, guess what? Obey him. Why? For the sake of Allah. You do it for the sake of Allah. You tell yourself, look, I'm not doing it for him. Okay, because women, they like to be like this. Well, I'm not doing it for He's not going to control me. He's not going to. Okay, fine. But do it for the sake of Allah. So that you don't destroy yourself. Because if you disobey him, you are destroying yourself more than anyone else. So here it's recorded in the two sayings that the Messenger of Allah وسلم, said, سَبْعَةٌ يُظِلُّهُمُ اللَّهُ فِي ظِلِّهِ يَوْمَ لَا ظِلَّ إِلَّا ظِلُّهُ إِمَامٌ عَادٍ وَشَابٌ نَشَأَ فِي عِبَادَةِ اللَّهِ وَرَجُلٌ قَلْبُهُ مُعَلَّقٌ بِالْمَسْجِدِ إِذَا خَرَجَ مِنْهُمْ حتى يعود إليه ورجلان تحابا في الله اجتمع عليه وتفرق فيه ورجل تصدق بصدقة فأخفها حتى لا تعلم ما شماله ما عرفقة يمينه ورجل دعته امرأة ذات منصب وجمال فقال إني أخاف الله ورجل ذكر الله خاليا ففاضت عيناه On a day of judgment the sun will be so close to the heads about a mile away and it will be so hot and no shade because the, the, the earth Earth will be turned into a flat land. The only shade that will exist on that day is the shade of the throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But that shade is not for everyone. It's for only seven types of people that undertook some actions in this world that earned them the privilege of being shaded by the throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah will give shade to seven types of people on day of judgment when there will be no shade except Allah's throne's shade. Number one, a just ruler, a Muslim leader who uses Allah's law to judge among his, his population and establishes justice among them, just like the case of the uh, four Al Khulafa Al Rashidin. <coughs> They'll be pleased with them, and Abd, uh, Umar bin Abdul Aziz also. These were for sure just rulers. But of course, a just ruler doesn't only mean a ruler of a country, maybe a ruler of, of a province, a ruler of uh, a company. A ruler in his own home you know you can be a just ruler in many places wherever you have authority you are a type of a ruler so if you establish justice Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reward you for it second type is a man whose heart is attached to the masjid from the time he goes out of the masjid he's always thinking about when it when am I gonna go back to the masjid to pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so his heart is concerned with the masjid this doesn't mean that you know, some people think that that means I'm gonna pray Fajr prayer I'm gonna remain in the masjid until a prayer isha. No. You have to go, you have to work, you have to do whatever you need to do, but when the salat time comes, you should leave that, all of that, and go to pray. That's why in Saturday, for example, they close the masajid during the time of prayer. And of course, now the hypocrites, they're calling to abolish in this law. They're saying, just leave the, the, the stores open. But of course, if you leave the stores open, people will say, okay, you know what? I'll just finish this transaction there, I'll go pray jama'ah, and then they will miss the jama'ah and then after they'll say well you know what let me just pray home by myself and then you know it's a slippery slope and you're going to have the situation that exists today in most muslim countries which is a small percentage of people only that go pray in congregation and masjid <clears throat> also third type two persons who love each other for the sake of allah in other words they don't want worldly benefit from each other i mean they may have some worldly dealings with them but they don't love each other for money or for something else except for the sake that they are both on the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They meet and part in Allah's cause only. A man who gives charitable gifts so secretly that his left hand does not know what his right hand was given. In other words, he's doing it truly for the sake of Allah. He is ex uh, uh, exposing sincerity to the point that he doesn't let his left hand know what his right hand has, has meaning even the other people, the outside people don't even know what he's doing. Also a man who refuses the call of a charming woman of noble birth for illicit intercourse with her. Just like Yusuf alayhi salam, the wife of the Aziz, she was wealthy and she had noble birth from a noble lineage. But he refused her and said, I am afraid of Allah. And a person finally who remembers Allah in seclusion and his eyes are then flooded with tears because he has sincerity for Allah. He loves Allah that even when he thinks about Allah, uh, he... he 
he shows that he's crying. So many, some people, they think that this means that when you are reciting Quran, you cry. That means that th this is the type of people that Allah is speaking about. You know, it says here in seclusion, you are by yourself. No one is there to watch you, look at you, speak about you. That person is crying from the fear of Allah. No, when you are in seclusion, speaking you and Allah and your eyes are flooded with tears. <laughs> Then it occurred to them, to these women, after they had seen the proofs of his innocence, to imprison him for a time. They wanted to punish him because he did not uh, answer their call to commit the evil sexual act. Yusuf is in prison without justification. Allah says, then it occurred to them that it would be in their interest to in prison Yusuf for a time, even after they were convinced that he was innocent, and they saw the proof of his truth, honesty, and chastity. It appears that Allah knows best that they imprison him after the news of what happened spread. So they try to protect the the uh, so they tried to protect the wife of the Aziz. And that's why they imprisoned Yusuf alayhi salam so that people could say, Oh, he's the one that tried to seduce her and not the opposite way. So they tried to salvage her reputation, and as a result, they imprisoned Yusuf alayhi salam so that they can say that he's the one that tried to, to seduce the Aziz's wives and that they punished him with imprisonment. Plot after plot, subhanAllah. This is why when the Pharaoh at the time, and again, we said the Pharaoh is a title of the rule of Egypt. There was a Pharaoh at the time of Yusuf alayhi salam. There was a Pharaoh after him at the time of Musa. There was a Pharaoh at the time of Ibrahim alayhi salam. And all these are different people because there were uh, hundreds of, of years between them. This is when the Pharaoh asked Yusuf to leave jail a long time afterwards. Yusuf alayhi salam refused to leave. Why? Because if he left, then and everyone's gonna say well you know okay yeah he did the evil act he went to prison and now he repented or something no he wanted to prove his innocence because reputation is everything for our believers so again back to the thing so people they think oh i don't care they accuse me falsely i don't know i didn't do anything so i'm not gonna say anything no you should say something you should defend yourself you should defend your reputation because a person only has a reputation he refused to leave until his innocence innocence was ascertained and the allegation of his betrayal was refuted so when this was successfully achieved uh, because the women when we're called by the pharaoh they feared for themselves and they told the truth and said yes surely Yusuf is as pure as he claims to be and it is us that did injustice to him Yusuf left the prison with his honor intact peace be upon him فقال الآخر إني أراني أحمل فوق رأسي خبزا تأكل الطير منه نبئنا بتأويله إنا نراك من المحسنين And there entered with him two young men in the prison. One of them said, Verily, I saw myself in a dream pressing wine. The other said, Verily, I saw myself in a dream carrying bread on my head and birds were eating thereof. They said, Inform us of the interpretation of this verily we think that you are one of the doers of good two jailmates asked yusuf salam to interpret their dreams qatada said one of them was the king's distiller the one that was squeezing wine and the other was his baker each one of these two men uh, were jailed and they had a dream and asked yusuf salam to interpret the dreams for, for them so yusuf salam answered them he said no food will come to you 
as you provision, except that I will inform you of its interpretation before it comes. This is of that which my Lord has taught me. Verily, I have abandoned the religion of a people that believe not in Allah and are disbelievers in the hereafter. And, and I have followed the religion of my fathers, Ibrahim, Ishaq, and Yaqub, alayhim salam. I never could we attribute any partners whatsoever to Allah. This is from the grace of Allah to us and to mankind, but most men thank not. So we will uh, stop here, inshallah, and we continue tomorrow, inshallah. Let's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to teach us the beneficial knowledge. Let's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to save us from all trials and tribulations. Let's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us steadfastness in the religion. Let's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to solve all of our problems. Let's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive our sins. Let's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to treat us with his mercy and not treat us with his justice. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to cure the sick among us and to have mercy on the dead among us. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to enable us to reach Ramadan and for us to uh, spend it in worship and for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us among the people that he saves from the fire in this coming Ramadan. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us uh, fast it and pray in it and worship him as he should worship subhanahu wa ta'ala and find to God the Prophet Muhammad in the highest paradise for Fidaus.